bring start in. Coach, if you just want to start off, we just want to hear your just general thoughts on uh, the upcoming season. Your first as EKU's head coach. Yeah, super excited about it for a lot of reasons. I, I think, you know, we, you and I have spoken about this. I wanted to be a head coach for a long time and, and wanted to make sure that it was in the right situation with the right people around me and, and all the things that go along with that and really feel settled about that here at EKU. The administration's off the charts. I'm sitting with one member of that administration with KB here behind the camera that you know, everyone here has been wonderful and welcoming and supportive. And then that has trickled down to our players who are very much excited. Obviously, you guys have probably are prepared to ask questions about, you know, us being off to a good start or them being off to a good start when the season was shut down last year. And you have, we have noticed that there is a sense of urgency and an and, and eagerness to get back out on the field and play. So we're ready to go. We're, uh, let me correct that. We're as ready as we can be to go. Uh, but very excited and, you know, looking forward to a tough season uh, with our schedule and, and conference is going to be difficult and, and and everything that goes with a, you know, a high level division one baseball play that, that you can expect in the OVC. Thanks coach. If you have a question for coach Prothor, let me know down the chat. I'll call on you coach. Then I'll start with this question first then, um, you know, and we did talk, you and I talked this specifically, but maybe not everybody heard it. You, you kind of come in a little late, but it, we're in a pandemic and, and, and everything's a little bit different. Now, I guess not ideal for what you want. What have you learned since you got on campus in September about this team? One thing I've learned is it's been, it's been wonderful to see is whether it's, you know, pandemic related, which has had an effect on, you know, every player, coach and program across the country. It's not specific, obviously just to us, but uh, whether it's pandemic related, class related, weather related, I, I, I jumped in at the end when you guys were talking to Mick and you kind of kiddingly said, good luck with the weather. And I'm, you know, walked over here staring at a field covered in ice and 28 degree uh, temperatures. Um, our guys really haven't complained much. And it's something that we have spoken with them about as far as trying to instill that attitude and that way of doing things is, you know, no one really cares about excuses or, or your feelings or, 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 those, or those type of things that you just kind of put your head down and go to work and, and see where you're at at the end of things. But I, I think it's, it's something that's kind of intrinsic to these players here that uh, whether it's the background they come from, the parents that they come from, or the family that's helped raise them and, and put those values and the way they work and go about their business, that there's not a lot of complainers. They just kind of do the work and are excited about it. And whether it's, you know, 28 degrees and, and the frozen on the turf or it's 65 degrees and sunny, which we haven't had a whole lot of those days since I've been here. Uh, you kind of get the same effort and enthusiasm out of these guys every day, which has been fun to see. Uh, Joe Healy, go ahead with your question. Hey, Coach, how are you? Hey, good. Um, I'm curious, I asked Mick this as well, but I I'm curious how you and your coaching staff are thinking through a series with a doubleheader every weekend, specifically how you, you manage the pitching staff and how you're thinking about stacking a bullpen. Uh, I'm curious your thoughts there. Yeah, so it's different. And, you know, one of the first things that we talked about that was going to make it potentially – very interesting is, is had the format of the games and how they were going to be set up, whether there'd be a seven inning game in there or, or two seven inning games, should we go to a four game weekend? So just trying to figure out, you know, what's the best way to set up your pitching staff, both for success, right? You want to win the games, but also for, for their health and safety and making sure that they can over the course of, you know, a, you know, a 10 weekend or 10 week season conference season that you're going to have guys be healthy and effective for the most part. So, you know, whether that's you go with your quote unquote number one on a Friday to make sure that the bullpen's wide open and available as much as you can. You don't burn through it on Friday night to have most guys available for two games on Saturday or, or vice versa. You kind of, you know, pin it up on the first day to, to have your best two starters available on Saturday. Uh, it's something that we're talking about with our coaching staff and trying to decide if the conventional route, you know, you're number one, you go on Friday and you see where you're at at the end of the night. Uh, or if there's something, you know, different to set up the rest of the weekend. So it's, it's definitely unique. It's interesting. I, I'm sure if you ask any of our coaches in our, in our league, no one's really super excited about double headers uh, because of the things that go along with it, these types of decisions, the length of the days. Um, but it's a, it's a challenge for everyone. So it's even, it's equal. And we'll figure out the best way we can to put our pitching staff in the best position to be successful. Anybody else has a question, just let me know down in the chat. Um, Coach, we speak to Daniel Harris uh, a little bit. He was preseason all OVC, and he's gotten some national preseason honors as well. Sure, and rightfully so. You know, I was on the, uh, a Zoom call, preseason Zoom call with Robert Sampson the other night uh, with some of our supporters, and I think there might have been a few media, media members, and, and, it, and Danny came up as he should. You know, Danny's someone that uh, I said, you know, when we, play, when we play Georgia Tech this weekend, if they are spending any time 
in conversation with their program about ours, he is someone that will have to be game planned for. He has a chance to be, I would imagine, not have not having seen many of the teams in our league firsthand, but you know, knowing them reputationally, and then having you know some field with Jacksonville State and Austin P and some of those programs that are in the area that I came from, uh, he has a chance to be as impactful a player on both sides of the ball as probably there will be in the conference. You know, he has a chance to be an above average defender at second base. There's probably a lot of teams in the country that he could play shortstop for, including this one. Uh, but he has made the decision to accept his role as a second baseman and can be a very impactful defender there and change the game defensively from second base on the defensive side of the ball. And then offensively, he has got, you know, a chance to, again, hit in the middle of an order that he should be productive. You know, he's got some power. There's a really good stroke. He's shown he's got a track record, at least in a shortened season, uh, of being, you know, dangerous offensively, but has been pretty steady over his career here. So we, we hope that he's continuing to get better. Uh, he's got a chance to be a really good player, uh, to have a chance to play for a while. Uh, but again, you know, I said this the other night, you know, he hit 490 or 460 or whatever it was last year and, and going into this year that guarantees him nothing. You know, he's got some work left to do and some, some things left to prove. I think, you know, I said this to his face and I'll say it again. I kind of have it in the holster, you know, D1Baseball.com picked him as preseason player of the year, but he wasn't one of the top 20 professional prospects in our league, according to them. So, you know, there is, there is some respect for him still to gain, I think. Uh, Joe had a follow-up question. Go ahead, Joe. I'm curious about uh, Davenport's role on the mound. Um, you, you like him in the rotation? Because he, he strikes me as, as a type of guy who might be able to do a lot of different things, kind of as that, that guy who can be a swing arm and, and a little bit of this, a little bit of that for you. So I'm curious what you guys are looking at for him going into the season. Sure. So Louis, Louis is one of those guys, I think, if – if you're looking at him from a professional standpoint or a scouting standpoint, or just like you said, kind of being creative and how you use him, he's a, he's a pitcher that you could dream on in the bullpen with his stuff ticking up a little bit. You know, the slider would be a little bit harder, probably hold or jump a little bit in his velo. He pitches anywhere from 90, 94 as a starter over a course of, you know, we've seen him four or five innings at a time now. Um, but you might dream and say, you know, does that 90, 94 turn into 93, 95 with a chance for more, or a little bit harder breaking ball. But you know, for Louie and this program, it, we try to do both, right? We try to put our players in the best position we can for them to be successful, for our program to help us win. And then also, we want our guys to have a chance and the opportunity to move on and play when they're done here. And so for Louie to check both of those boxes, at least initially, uh, he, he is going to be in our rotation. And what we've tried to do is, you know, we try to get with our strength coaches, put some weight on him. We've tried to work with him and on his, on his delivery to be able to repeat that delivery consistently with as uh, little as effort as possible to be able to maintain his stuff over the course of 75 to 85 to uh, 100 some odd pitches. So I'm hopeful that, or we are hopeful that he can be a dominant type pitcher for a longer stretch of time and do that week in and week out. If anybody else has one, we, we have time for another one. We started coach about a minute late, but I'm going to ask, um, obviously it's your first year coach. The, the last year didn't get played. It's hard to, hard to sort of judge what the OVC would have been like last year. Just what are your impressions of what you think it might be like? I, and you and I, I think have spoken about this before. So Jacksonville state was in the state of Alabama. I was there for five or six years, you know, recruiting against them. We played them a couple of times. They're good. You know, they're good. Austin P. I, I played for coach Jansen. I know the coaches there. I know they're working at it. Belmont, the same thing. I know the coaches there. I know they're working at it and trying to be good. And I'm going to miss some schools, but you know, at, at CMO, at SIU Edwardsville, all, all these schools in our in our conference uh, that if I don't, if I've never seen them play with my own eyes, or I don't know their coaches personally, I know them reputationally. Coach Aoki at, at Moorhead State said, so I know his background as well. So uh, I, we expect it to be highly competitive. We expect the programs uh, to be very talented. Uh, we expect it to be a dogfight each and every weekend. And some of those things are cliche, but they're cliche for a reason. You know, these coaches know what they're doing, these schools, unless I'm missing something, are committed to being good at baseball across the board. And so that means usually when you put those two things together, you get a pretty good product on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So uh, we need to be prepared uh, every weekend to, you know, get to someone's best shot and know that best shot's going to be pretty good. But hopefully by the end of that weekend, they'll have felt our presence as well. Well, Coach, we appreciate your time this morning. Uh, thanks. Best of luck. And uh, hope that ice melts soon for you. Uh, we'll see, but uh, I appreciate it. Thank you guys for being here. Thanks, Coach.